Hi, I'm Mike Pedley. I'm Head of Energy with Dua Cymru Welsh Water. Um, I'm the warm-up act for Jonathan down there because all the rest of this is talking about how people are meeting the challenges the, uh, of innovations. Well, I'm actually not talking about how I'm meeting them. I, I just set the challenges and other people in this room have got to work out how to meet them. I'm going to do a little overview of Dua Cymru's hydro programme uh, and I'm going to highlight a few of the challenges that, that hydro in the water industry sets compared to hydro in some of the other examples, rivers and whatever that we've, uh, that we've heard about today. Um, it's with Dua Cymru Welsh Water who are a not-for-profit organisation which has great advantages for me. We do actually, we're a private company, we make a profit, but that profit is reinvested. We have no shareholders. It's all reinvested either to improve quality for our customers or to reduce bills, which of course is a, so driving down operating costs, it's a key reason we do hydro. Um, our total investment in renewable energy over a five year period through to 2015 is gonna be about 100 million. Now, it would be great to have all that for hydro. Sadly, most of it is, uh, has gone into some large uh, anaerobic digestion plants. But hydro is a growing part of our, uh, growing part of our portfolio. So we've currently got about eight sites live and then about another 12 in various stages of design, commissioning, delivery. And we're doing a lot of work elsewhere on other uh, other renewable energies but of course today we're going to focus on on hydro for those of you that are sitting in the room thinking well that's not very much because I'm sure I've been to Ellen Valley or Briani and I've seen some big hydro generators well they're on Dua Cymru assets those are run by uh, by Infinis so I've not included those uh, those in here we're just focusing on the uh, the current Welsh water program which is a uh, um, really on the micro side small hydro anything from 15 kilowatts up to about 250. Uh, just to give you an idea of, uh, of geography, uh, this is our complete renewable energy program. The ones we're interested in here are the, are the blues. The, uh, the, the dark blues are the ones that are alive and operating today. The light blues are where we're in various stages of design, delivery, construction. You know, there's, uh, there's various with uh, Sybil's works ongoing now. Uh, the other colours you see are all the other renewable technologies, the big, the big greens being the, the anaerobic digestion. So right across Wales, uh, in total, yes, we hope to get to about, uh, about 20 hydro. Now, why do we do it? Well, I don't think I need to cover that really very much with the audiences, but suffice to say, the key thing for us is cost reduction. This is a commercial exercise. It's, Yes, it helps con contribute to our carbon reduction, but it's really around cost reduction and commercial risk reduction. In other words, generating more of our own electricity on site. We use about 440 gigawatt hours a year across our sites in Wales. All right, let's get on to what sort of, um, how, how do these sites differ from, you know, what, what, what's the characteristics of them? Well. Even though you say it's, it's water industry, they're in pipe solutions. Most of them are in pipe solutions anyway. Uh, they can be, still be on a, a huge variety of assets. So the ones you're most familiar with on reservoirs, but that's probably certainly going forward. That'll be the minority of the ones that we actually, that we actually put in. The majority of the work is on Three type, we've got three types of water. We've got raw water, which is, in other words, water that you get in rivers that comes down to our treatment works. We've then got treated water, which, in other words, drinking water, the stuff that we turn our taps on. And that, going forward, that's where there'll be an even bigger... Uh, in this, this period, up to 2015, most of our, our investment is on things like the inlet to water treatment works or on brake pressure tanks on the way down to those water treatment works. Going forward, far more will be on treated water, drinking water, and that sets even, even greater challenges, not just on the quality of water, but also on the locations. For example, we have, in Welsh water, we've got about 3,000 pressure reducing valves. <coughs> now, to those of us into hydro, that's 3,000 opportunities to take that pressure out, and not just dissipate it, but actually generate some energy. 
but to actually achieve that, that's still a real challenge for our industry because taking a very simple, cheap pressure reducing valve and replacing it with a small hydro with all everything you need to get power out, you know, if you could actually do a like for like replacement, that, that, that's the real sort of holy grail for hydro in the water industry, I think. The other aspect is that we're using existing, generally anyway, we're using existing licenses and consents. In other words, we're not taking extra water out to generate. We're generating off water that we bring into our system to supply to customers. And that, you know, from, from my role, that's something I've constantly got to remind my team, which is we're, sadly, of secondary importance. Our, our prime aim is to supply good quality drinking water 24-7, so when you turn on your tap, it comes out. And yes, we can put hydro on that system, but you know, the hydro is secondary. And we've got to remember that, not just when it's running, but also through the installation process. Um, how we're delivering it, I think it's important, given we've got Dua Cymru and Dulas over here, that we say something about how we deliver it, because uh, it's not, uh, it's not just through one, uh, one particular partner. The other thing to say is that uh, we have some internal capabilities within hydro. I have one dedicated hydro engineer, uh, one person dedicated to hydro. I also hope he's dedicated to hydro. Uh, <laughs> he's sat in the audience here, that's Hugh Schofield. Uh, we also have a large capital delivery team who are more used to building big treatment works and sewage works but they will do some of the project management for the actual on-site delivery and the health and safety. But the key expertise comes from our four framework partners, uh, AMCO, Carter Jonas, and Ed's over there from Carter Jonas, Dulas, and MMB. And they provide, the, they provide the expertise, the design expertise. They're the ones that really get their heads around how do you meet the challenges in a water industry environment? And, how do you, and not only how do you technically put something in that meets our requirements, but how do you implement it? How, do, for example, do you deal with trying to make major pipe modifications into plants that have to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, have very limited storage, can only shut down for a few hours? And that we achieve that, and, uh, but there are some of the challenges that, uh, that Jonathan will talk about. So to, um, to summarize this, um, this uh, very brief opening, I'd have loved to have shown you lots of more pictures of our sites and uh, other things, but to summarise this opening uh, and to set the context for what Jonathan's going to talk about. Um, for us, hydro is secondary. Works operation and control is, is absolutely vital. You know, that's the thing. We've got to keep supplying our customers with water 24 hours a day. Secondly, in, in, going forward, more, more and more schemes will be built, I hope, within the treated water network. So the smaller diameter pipes as they head off towards uh, customers, not the really tiny ones, but I say smaller diameter, you know, you still, some of our treated water pipes are still 24 inch, 12 inch, you know, still some chunky uh, mains out there and big flows. We also have to release water into rivers from our reservoirs and we put hydros on those compensation and maintaining the strict regulation on that is, is very, very important. And finally, these factors apply to risk re-emphasize all the way through the process. It's not just about can we design something that will work fantastically when it's in, it's can we design something that we can actually install without disrupting. None of us want to turn our taps on and get discolored water or have no water at all, can we implement hydros on that system that, that give us that? So to tell us about how, we, uh, how at least one of our partners meets some of those challenges, I'll hand over to Jonathan. Well, thank you, Mike. And uh, I'm Jonathan Cox from Dallas, and it's a pleasure to be here with you all this morning. Uh, so Mike has set the scene, the target, and he's underlined very carefully what the one um, condition is, is that the, the hydro must be transparent to the primary operation of the works. So just 
catch up with ourselves. So now what we're going to turn to is looking at some of the ways we do that, some of the particular technical issues we have that are different from a normal run of river scheme and uh, not just the process of design but also how do you implement schemes in an operating water treatment works environment. So the, the, the first type of scheme, generic type of scheme, are works in literal water schemes. So this is putting a hydro often in a water treatment works or very close by to one. Uh, and the water comes out of the hydro and into the inlet tank of the daft plant very typically. And when you think about it, if we're going to meet this transparency objective, if there is a hydro fault, we need to continue to supply the water to the works. And so we need some sort of bypass system. And when you think about it a bit more, the changeover to or from the bypass can be done in different ways. Fully automatically would ideally be what we would want to have, with no manual intervention at all. Uh, automatic but manually initiated is realistically what's happening very often. Uh, or automatic PLC initiated automatically. <coughs> so the first, the first main challenge we have is the bypass system and making sure it works. Another thing that the hydro could do which could affect the works is if we have um, a turbine valve, for example, that opens or closes too quickly, we might initiate a surge event that blows the raw water main. Uh, you then don't lose all your water, but you have operations exceedingly annoyed with you. Um, so it's very, very important, particularly on legacy pipe work, old cast iron raw water mains to make sure that the hydro isn't going to affect the or damage the uh, the raw water mains themselves. The changeover process, going back to that, must not affect dosing because the water that comes out of the turbine or the bypass, it goes into the inlet where it gets dosed to clean it up so that we can drink it. So if we have a transient situation where the water flow is for a period of five, ten minutes, perhaps half an hour, it's changing in a slightly uncontrolled way, that could give operations a problem. So we've got to make sure that doesn't happen. As Mike's already said, we're, we're the, the, the uh, underlying plant is very often running 247, and the hydro will be operating typically at very close to its design power, unlike a run of river where it may only be doing that for a, a, a relatively short amount of time. Practically speaking, we've got to make sure that we keep oil and grease out of the works. That is something we have to do on run of river schemes as well. But another thing is, is that the hydro control panel may not be working completely in isolation. On a, uh, a works inlet raw water scheme, in fact the water treatment works MCC control may well be controlling the flow valves on the turbine. So there needs to be some integration, there needs to be sharing of signals. And of course when the turbine and the, uh, the mechanical plant, the control plant needs maintenance, that needs to be done without affecting the works. So again, it's got to be completely transparent, all aspects of the operation, operations, service and maintenance. So by way of an example, we'll, we're going to touch on a scheme that Dulles was involved with uh, and helped to deliver um, in July last year at Strata Florida Water Treatment Works. And some of the key points about it are, are, are listed on this slide. Uh, it's a first, I use the word substantial um, microhydro. This has got a, um, a capacity of about 140 kilowatts. Um, but it's got the full bypass provision and we'll see some photos uh, of that in a minute. Uh, the operation of the hydro control cabinets are integrated 
not completely, but to a large extent with the MCC control of the water treatment works itself. So there's shared signals. Uh, it's, it's a Pelton turbine, so the, the Pelton spear, the actuators are controlled by, the, by, op, by ops, by the operators themselves. So when they get a command from network to increase the flow that day, or decrease the flow that's going to pass through the treatment works, ops will do that. The hydro control cabinet has, has no control of that. And the changeover, which we were thinking about as, a, as one of the main issues we have to deal with, uh, in this case it's done automatically but it's, it's manually initiated. That is to say an operator or operation staff will want to be on site to sort of supervise the changeover process. Because of course the turbine fault could occur, could occur at three o'clock in the morning uh, when, when nobody's around and on, on, on many many sites they're not manned 247, they'll just be man, manned during the day. So at Strata, one of the things that was a, a bit new, certainly new to Dulas, is having an elevated powerhouse, which um, gave us some civil uh, um, pro um, problems to be solved, as well as introducing the raw water mains. They had come up upwards. Well, you'll, you'll, see in a, you'll see in a second. And it's high head, certainly high head in water industry terms, and we're thinking of it from a health and safety point of view as much as anything. Uh, 20 bar, um, 140 kilowatts, and it has a very high capacity factor, 80 to 90 percent. And I can, one of our engineers was checking this, and over its first year of um, service, it has been right smack in the middle of those two figures. Uh, because the the plant is working at relatively high duty, shall we say, certainly in terms of rotations or hours clocked of time running. Um, plant balance, I'm talking about the, 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 the balance of the rotating equipment, uh, needs to be fairly tightly specified. And so here we, we have it, um, and uh, we can see this is the new powerhouse, and this is the one branch, so the water comes out of the turbine and down and into the works, which is down below. And if the turbine is off, the bypass is underground, and through this chamber, in which there are the PRV valves that Mike was talking about earlier, pressure reducing valves, which were breaking the pressure, and uh, flow control valves in there. So there, figuratively, are the, shows you the two branches of supply. And this shows the same thing schematically, uh, and we won't dwell on too many of the details, other than to say, the water is supplied to the works here, the daft plant here, via two separate upland reservoirs. They're not at the same, the water, top water level of those two reservoirs is not the same level. Uh, so what we've done is we've brought the water down and it's a two jet machine. One jet is supplied from one res and the other jet is supplied from the other. Uh, we have a, a, a kiosk powerhouse, which you saw in the previous shot, and this shows you the bypass arrangement around that way, and this is work supply via hydro. And there are the PRVs, flow control valves, but the DAF plant has control over uh, the spear valves themselves, and that's what's slightly different. It's one of the challenges. We've got to integrate the control. Uh, here is the uh, inside the powerhouse, and we can see the rising mains, one from each reservoir, effectively. Uh, and you can see the detail of the kiosk. Uh, it's a kiosk that's made to uh, a certain security level that Welsh Water required. So if you, throw, if you drop a bomb outside, it's not going to do too much damage to the, the kiosk because it's reinforced uh, in, in certain ways. So that was by way of example to a, uh, an embedded hydro scheme that's actually embedded literally in and on a water treatment works. Uh, another type of scheme, as, as, as Mike has already pointed out, are the compensation sets that will typically be on, an, on the reservoir itself 
and working off the water that has to be discharged back into the watercourse. Uh, typically, you're looking at a three bar, you know, sort of 30 metres of, of, of head to, to use, and uh, therefore you will be looking at things like cross flows, uh, turgos. Um, ideally, you might want to use a Kaplan or a Francis, if possible. Uh, and we have used uh, a cross flow at Alwyn Water Treatment Works, and we've refurbished the one in the picture there um, at Clisi Fran. Uh, so this was a legacy set put in, Jukes equipment put in, um, I don't know when, probably in the 60s or something like that. So again, the, the important thing is changeover, because of course if your turbine, if there's a turbine fault, you've got to stop the water coming going through the turbine, but you've still got to meet the, um, uh, the compensation flow that Welsh water need to be putting out. So we need to make that process completely fail-safe, um, either by obviously using some sort, some form of fail-safe actuator. Uh, and the EA certainly um, have, have liked that to be um, not, elect uh, not energy stored in electrically in a battery, but, but really either in a weight or, 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 or energy stored in a spring. That's typically been the, uh, the requirement. Another very interesting variation of a reservoir compensation scheme is uh, what we what I've termed here a two-point operation scheme which is where the one point of operation is the compensation flow but the other point of operation is the spill when when the res starts to spill um, and uh, typical Welsh uh, water uh, reservoirs they will spill a lot of water for roughly 30 percent of the year and that water is effectively wasted. So uh, there are ways of using um, uh, setting up a, a turbine to operate on two points of operation and it's just simply operating one of those two two modes either at full load or at the compensation flow. Brake pressure tanks were, were, were mentioned earlier and here is a picture of one and at this particular site the raw water mains, part of the raw water main network, are cast iron from the 1920s. And so this issue of surge pressure I was talking uh, about earlier becomes relatively critical. And at this site we did a surge analysis to assure ourselves that in all modes of operation we weren't going to do anything that we didn't intend to with the raw water main. Another opportunity that this site shows is the possibility of, um, rather than connecting into the grid at the location, taking a private wire down to the water treatment works and connecting there, which adds value to the energy generated. And that's demonstrated perhaps best on this slide very quickly. So these are the brake pressure tanks. The photo in the last shot was there. The works is down in the valley. It's all fed from an upland reservoir. This reservoir also supplies uh, RWM power for their Dolgarog um, hydro station. And there are two brake pressure tanks. And this type of scheme is simply putting in a, a turbine to replace the existing method of breaking the pressure. And, but you have to connect the grid up at the top of the hill. So one opportunity is to generate the power there and take a private wire down into the works. So that's what, what I was talking about in the, in the last one. There are other opportunities. There's lots of different sorts of assets in the water industry. Um, wastewater treatment outfall schemes, where the issues there may be related to whether it be low head, uh, but also choice of material. Replacing of pressure reducing valves, where a Francis turbine would be the ideal choice. But again, we need to think about the possible transient effects of that turbine under loss of load. Use of pumps as turbines, this is something that Dulles has not done, I'll be very clear on that, but has Welsh Water have used a pump as turbine schemes very successfully, or such we say successfully, on one or two uh, sites in Wales. And 
there's opportunities in terms of intakes. Uh, and I apologise as we obviously supply Coanda to put this up, but Coanda intakes are a possibility. Okay, so I'll, I'll just have to try and, try and wrap up now, but uh, where the innovation is, is, is in conceptualization and, uh, conceptualization and, and simulation. So this section follows on nicely from Dewey's, um, where we are using simulation in three main ways. Physical modeling, using a, a program called SketchUp, and you can see a, a sort of model you can create to help with ideas. Um, hydraulic modeling, which is the, uh, the second one over here, uh, and, and this is a network where you have um, a network of pipes. Uh, and what happens when you generate your, your surge? How is it going to travel around this network? Uh, so that's where it becomes important and we're using, starting to use uh, a program called Flowmaster which enables you to do transient analyses uh, relatively quickly. And the third simulation that we're starting to use is electrical simulation, so we're simulating of transmission lines um, typically looking at reactive effects, capacitive effects, uh, inductive effects on transmission lines uh, and we're, we're looking at that in particular in relation to the private wire that I was talking about earlier. The, the, the slide, the, the, the graphic here is actually a pressure surge uh, response uh, from a simulation. I haven't even touched upon the whole aspect of how do you actually install and commission your wonderful scheme when the works is in full flow and uh, obviously there are issues there are going to be issues with that uh, and this slide sort of tries to summarize them particularly the wet commissioning is more complicated because of operational requirements uh, and therefore the wet commissioning needs to be fitted into shutdowns works shutdowns uh, and it might involve pumping water out and clearly good management, contract management is going to be needed uh, and I won't go into that but uh, it's clearly the case. So in conclusion, <coughs> Mike set the, uh, the challenges and it's this business of it, the operation, the underlying operation being live 247. We haven't actually gone into any detail of the the regulatory framework that we have to work within, uh, but uh, it's it's a, a lot of it is obviously common to normal hydro, and we've looked at how through simulation and modelling uh, we can we can actually get a lot of work done before actually getting working in the ground, um, and of course there's the bigger picture. Um, a greener water industry benefits all of us, of course. Um, and we all want a greener society. And one of the hidden benefits of a water industry project is reduced grid transmission losses. And that's something to think about. Because water treatment works tend to be in remote places. And the loss of, gener the loss of power generated centrally between the nuclear power station and the remote works such as Strata Florida, that is all saved because you generate a lot of power locally. And so that's probably a good place to finish. Thank you.